Hi there, welcome back to Survivor Geek. Today we're going to be talking about fire starting in a variety of different conditions. Now for ease of discussion, I've split up these conditions into three different levels. Level one is good conditions, pretty much what we have here. It's warm, sunny, lots of dry material on the ground, no wind. It's pretty easy to start a fire in these circumstances. Level two are the difficult circumstances. You'll probably have a lot of moisture, some wind, it'll be cold, it'll be overcast or a combination of those things just makes it more difficult to, to start a fire. And then level three is the near impossible. Very cold, very wet, possibly a lot of wind, getting dark or af after sunset already. You need specialized tools to start a fire in these conditions. So the reason that we're talking about these is because there's a lot of people who talk about the different methods they carry for fire starting. And they say you should carry multiple methods and that's a good idea. Um, <clears throat> but if you carry three methods of starting a fire, and they're all level one methods, then you're going to be in a world of hurt if you run into a level three situation. Just as an example, if your three methods of fire are a magnifying glass, and a pack of paper matches, and you've made a bow drill in the past a couple of times, and so you figure, hey, why not the heck, I can do that again, that's, that's my third option. Now, if you run into a level three situation, your paper matches might get blown out by the wind. They'll have some trouble there. Your magnifying glass won't work unless you've got a bright sun. And if you can't find a dry platform for your fire bow and you're not very skilled with it, you've just really hurt yourself a lot if you're in a level three condition. So now we're gonna talk about the different tools and methods that you can use in these different conditions to start a fire. All right. So here is a sampling of different tools that you can use in the various levels of conditions for fire starting. First, I want to talk to you about solar method. Um, this method is basically focusing the rays of the sun onto an appropriate tinder to get a little ember that you're going to blow into a flame. Um, the best type of tinder to use for this is some small, dark, small pieces of dark tinder and uh, get that lit up and then blow it into a fire bundle. Some examples of the items you can use for this are a magnifying glass, which is essentially a convex lens. You could also get a convex lens out of your camera, out of your binoculars, or you can carry a little Fresnel lens. It's basically a convex lens that has been flattened down to the size of a credit card. It makes for a very easy carry in your wallet. You can also use a parabolic mirror of some kind. The next method is the friction method. This is the old rubbing two sticks together. This is your fire bow, fire plow, or fire saw methods. Um, these require a little bit more experience and practice to use reliably. When you have practiced them, you can use them pretty reliably in levels one and two. Some of the really good people could use them in level three, um, but basically it's the same goal as you're producing a little ember that you're gonna put into a tinder nest and then blow into a flame. Next, you have the compression method. This is the fire piston. Some of you may have seen this before. Um, relatively low skill to use, a lot easier than the friction methods, but in order to build one, you need a lot of skill, or you could buy one. But one way or the other, if you don't carry it with you, it's very unlikely that you're gonna build one out in the woods. The next method is producing a spark. This method can work really well in all the levels, as long as you have the appropriate tinder to catch the spark. You can either have some dried materials, um, really finely um, ground up like that. Um, the problem with that is though, is that wind can blow it away. So if you're in a level two or level three situation because of wind, then that might be a harder way of doing it. Char cloth is an easy solution to this because it will catch a spark and it's actually helped by the wind. So char cloth makes that a lot easier to use. Also, if you have some kind of liquid chemical, you can start that very easily with a spark. Um, if you have a dry chemical, once again, generally it needs to be powdered and the wind can blow that away. But as long as you can hit it with a spark, you'll be good. So we have a standard fire steel here. We have a couple of spring-loaded versions. We've got the Sparky and the Blast Match from Ultimate Survival Technologies. And they will produce just a lot of sparks very easily, one-handed. But you do have to invest in them a little bit more, a little bit more money off the top. Um, the next method is lighters. A lot of people prefer to carry cheap little Bic lighters. That's a great option for the level one, possibly level two fire starting. Once you get into level three, you run into some problems. First of all, the butane might not vaporize if it's too cold. So that's an issue there. 
Also on some of the cheaper lighters, the sparkers can tend to wear out over time or just deteriorate over time, so they're a little bit less reliable. You can pay a little bit more money for a stormproof lighter like this. It's got a different type of sparker in it, and a compressed flame there, so it's a little bit more reliable. But if you do have a good one for level 3 conditions, then I wouldn't use it in level 1 conditions because you don't want to waste the fuel in those easy conditions. Next we've got matches. Now these little paper matches here, I would encourage you to leave them home because in level 1 conditions you've got a finite amount. You can only start so many fires. Level 3 conditions, I don't think these matches are going to cut. So you're going to want to carry some matches more like these. This is a stormproof match from Industrial Revolution, it's called a UCO match, and this will light even when wet, it will stay lit under the water, and it's almost entirely windproof, it's pretty incredible. So these are a really good option to have in level 3 fire starting conditions, and carry a dozen or so with you, but save them for those level 3 starting conditions because, like I said, you've only got a handful, and when you run out, you're out, and you're not going to make any more of those. So. These are just a sampling of some of the tools you can use for fire starting in the different conditions. Like I said, you might have other methods. You might um, have other preferences. These are just some things that I happen to have that I can show you. Next, we're going to talk about tinders and why those specific tinders are good in each of the different levels and how you would get those tinders started with the kind of tools that we have here. So thanks for watching. This has been Doug with SurvivorGeek.com.